Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In today's video, we're going to be going over the updates in Studio One Fire Professional version 5.5 because there's a load of updates for the project page. Hi folks, Smudge here and welcome to Mastering in the Box, your home for simple guidance and digital mastering and digital audio. In today's video, I am so, so, so excited because we are covering the new Studio One Professional version 5.5 updates and I'll be covering eight updates to the project page which makes it so much better for mastering purposes. Before we get into today's video, if you do want to know more about digital mastering, please make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tick that bell and select all to receive notifications on all of our videos moving forward. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that will certainly help the algorithms to recommend this to other people so they can see this content as well. So let's get into the video. So, update number one, and I am so over the moon to announce this. There is now automation available in the project page. This is amazing. It's something we've been asking for a long, long time, and it's now in Studio One Professional Version 5.5. Why is this so important? For those who think that automation is just for mixing, it is not. It's, it can be such a useful tool inside of mastering. This is not about fixing the mix. This is just about enhancing the master, maybe just increasing the volume by maybe half a dB in certain areas, just to add a little bit more energy, emotion, lots of other goodies that we can do with automation. How do we do it? Well, we do it by pressing the A button, which brings up the automation lane. And if we click on this display off and we select the track we want to apply automation to, we now have the automation lane. Now, if we go into the track, and if you see at this particular section right around here, we actually go into the a bit of a crescendo. So it's a bit of a quieter part going into the, the final chorus. And it's just here. What I want to do is kind of ramp this up a bit. Let's just take a brief listen. So what I want to do is just add just a little bit, probably around there to there. And I'm just going to get a little bit of automation going through. I'm going to raise this whole section by about half a dB. So we can do this by, we want to set the beginning and the end points. And we also want to set a point here. And now what I can do is I can raise this area around about, let's just do, oh, no, I don't want to do it that far, do we? Right, let's say 0.7 dB. And we can get rid of this second one. And what that's done is it's now added a little fade in as well. So if we go in a little bit closer, you can see it's kind of ramping up and we've now got, say, 0.7 dB of an increase. Let's take a listen. So it just adds that little bit of extra energy, a little bit of emotion just to certain parts of the track. So this is why automation can be fantastic in mastering. And I'm so grateful that this is now part of the project page. And for the second update, we now have clip gain envelopes. Now, clip gain envelopes have been in Studio One in the song page for quite some time now. And we've been able to sort of do it inside the project page where we could split the event and then manually adjust the gain on the clip. But we now got control of the clip gain envelopes. How do we do it? Well, we right click on the waveform. And as you can see here, we've got this option here for gain envelope. And if I click this gain envelope here, it's now going to apply the gain marker inside of the actual stereo file itself. And let's just say, let's say this particular element here, let's just say it was too loud and I wanted to turn it down a little bit. I can then add a click here, add a click here, and you'll see it kind of, the cursor changes into a kind of a little H shape. And I'll just drag it down and it's, it's actually reduced the volume of that particular clip part there. It's just a great tool for editing. Now, just to kind of let you know, the clip gain is pre-inserts, whereas automation is post-inserts. So this is something that if you want to use clip gain, it's best to use it before you start adding plugins as a, like an editing function. And if you want to use any volume changes post-insert, so once your plugins have, have taken over, then use automation. But it's a great tool just to add just those little elements of editing inside of the project page if you need to do a few tweaks before you get into the process in itself. Update number three is the addition of the listen bus. And the listen bus has been a function of the song page for some time now, but we now have it inside of the project page. 
What is the listen bus? As you can see here on the master section, we can add inserts to the master channel or to the listen bus. The listen bus is perfect for anyone who wants to use any room EQ correction software, any headphone correction software, or like me, I love the Good Hertz can opener, so when I've got my headphones on, it adds a little bit of a cross feed between the, the left and the right can, just so we can hear a little bit of that kind of mixed stereo as you would, trying to replicate um, the sound of monitors. And this is great to add to the listen bus. Why add it to the listen bus? Well, if you add it to the master channel, and if you then did the final export, and forget to take any of those plugins off, your final export will have those plugins baked into the final master, which you don't want, because it is going to affect the sound. So what you have is the listen bus, which effectively replicates the master, but is not included in the final export. So you can use this to add all of your EQ correction plugins, and then do your final export without running the risk of embedding any of those plugins into the final master. Update number four is the ability to transform to rendered audio. Now, what does this actually mean? If we can see here on the inserts, I've got four plugins which I've applied to this particular master. If I right click on the track name on the left hand side and I'll click transform to rendered audio, what this will do is it will render the stereo file with that processing in place. If you're running on a slightly older system or if your CPU sometimes struggles with multi-song project files, then this is a great tool to use because it's just really going to free up that CPU so you can continue processing other songs in the uh, mastering projects. So as you can see, I've got those four pl uh, plugins there. If I was to transform to rendered audio, it will give me a clean stereo file with the processing in place, but the plugins will no longer be taking up CPU power because they will effectively disappear. The master will remain, the listen bus will remain, but these plugins here will go and it will free up CPU power to be able to enable you to continue mastering the rest of the project. Another great tip for this, if you're using any analog outboard gear, maybe using something like Pipeline XT, you can then send the audio out into the analog domain using your favorite compressors, EQs, etc. And then what you can then do is use this transform to rendered audio so you can pass everything through your analog chain back into the box, render the file with that processing. And then once you've done that render, you can then use your existing analog chain to then master other tracks inside of your project. So it's got multi uses, whether you're mastering in the box or out the box or hybrid. This is sort of a great tool just to enable you to really get the most of your workflow. Update number five, and this is another one which is going to be such a massive time saver, is the ability to render or export multiple file formats. So as we can see here, if we go into the digital release, we can select our location. And let's say I want to render out a WAV file and an MP3. I now have the ability to render out multiple different files. I can do each of the individual settings. If I want to do that 16-bit 44.1, I can then do the FLAC and add a different compression level. Same with MP3. If I then want to do you know, a variable constant bit rate, if I want to change the bit rate here, I can do that. And what this is going to enable us to do is press OK and it will run all of those different file formats for us. We don't have to now do individual exports for different file formats. This is going to be a massive, massive time saver for a lot of people. And this is a very welcome addition to the project page. Update number six, and whilst we have the digital release section open, there is a new, what they're calling as a target loudness option. And as you can see here, we've got this loudness box on the right hand side of the export page. What we can actually use this to do is if we click the adjust the loudness, we can then select our, let's say we want to select a, a SoundCloud. We want to bounce this out for a SoundCloud upload. What we can then do is we can click SoundCloud and it pre populates the maximum loudness and the maximum true peak. So if you are, you know, if you're running your limiters a bit hot and it goes over your maximum loudness, this is effectively going to normalize the audio for you. Personally, this isn't a feature that I will use because. I don't really, I certainly don't believe in targeting loudness. I'll master the track so the track sounds good. And then if the streaming platforms will normalize the audio and turn it down a little bit, 
so be it. I'm quite happy with that. I, as long as I know my final export sounds good, I know it will translate well to the streaming platforms. But let's give you another example. Let's say a client comes to you and says, okay, you've mastered this one. It sounds really good, but what's it going to sound like on Spotify? Well, I'll actually show you here. And I can actually click on Spotify. It will update the loudness details here. And I can do a separate export just so i can say to the client well this is the final master this is what i would recommend you upload to the digital distribution platforms but if you want to know what it sounds like on the streaming platforms here is going to be a, a good emulation of that and i can send them this file as well so it's really good from that perspective and for anyone out there who does any any kind of broadcast work you've got lots of different options so you've got the ebur 128 for broadcasting so you've got your minus 23 luffs there and lots of different options Personally, once again, if I take this example, Apple Music, it gives you minus 16 laughs. If you're using something like DistroKid CD Baby as your distributor, you can't send in multiple different files. So it's almost kind of a little bit pointless in that example. If you are doing a digital release, I would still err on the side of caution and say, just master it to how you think it sounds good and then let the streaming platforms do whatever they do. But certainly for me, I can find this useful if a client comes to me and says, what's it gonna sound like on Apple Music? What's it gonna sound like on Deezer or Spotify? I can then give them that option. If they want, if they want a WAV file and they want it max loudness at minus 14 i can do that and i can also send them my original master at whatever luffs and true peak level i've mastered it to so it's a good little option it's not something i will use a lot certainly i can see this being helpful for someone who's very new to mastering certainly those who don't feel comfortable necessarily around luffs and really kind of pushing their track um this could be a good little option but it's something they've added it's not the most value added update but certainly i'm not going to complain if this helps someone in some small way or shape or form then so be it so that is update number six update number seven and this is just a small update but it's once again it's a welcome little efficiency update and this is the tab to rename tracks so on the left hand side here i've got track number one as you can see it's the idd qd kurdistan waltz there will be a full mastering breakdown of this song coming very soon. Aria, if you're watching, apologies, it will be coming very soon. But let's say I want to rename this track to track one. And let's say I want to rename track two to track two. Rather than going to the mouse and clicking and retyping, I can now tab. It will automatically go down to track number two. Just a very small update, but something that's it's a welcome addition. It's more one of those efficiency updating workflow type things that just hopefully save some people rather than fumbling around trying to find the mouse and clicking, etc. It's just a small little addition which just saves some people that little bit of extra time. And the last of the updates I'll be showing you today is update number eight, which is the default reset pause time. Now, in version 5.4, the default reset pause was set to two seconds. What do I mean? If I now import another song file, then the you will instantly see the big gap between track one and track two. Now that's set to two seconds. If I right click on the track marker here and click reset pause, it's now defaulting back to zero. So it's not gonna add a pause if you click reset pause so for instance how would that apply if i was to drag this over here and if i was in click here and then reset pause obviously you can see it closes up with this marker so what i can do here is right click there reset track markers to content and there's no pause in between the songs i used to like the old two seconds but it wasn't everyone's cup of tea but it's fine all you do is you click on the waveform and you drag it now when it comes to this is where you need to get a little bit fiddly with it because it will snap there so you, the ability to get in really close is you have to zoom in further and if you can zoom in further the further you zoom in the closer you can get it so if you want a really small snap time then go right in there if you want a really small pause you just need to keep zooming in but it's just one of those things it allows you to really manually set the spacing between the tracks once again i wasn't necessarily against the minus the two seconds i quite like the two seconds but it's just one of those things that really kind of allows you to get in and do things manually as to how you want it rather than studio one doing it for you so it's a nice little addition for those who didn't like the two seconds for me i don't really worry too much about it i will import the file it will automatically default to two seconds and if i then move the tracks around here it's going to do it all for me anyway so i haven't got to worry about it too much so 
If you like the two seconds, you don't need to worry about it, but if you want to get in closer, you now have the ability to do it with the reset pause and you can adjust the stereo files manually. So that's it for today's video. Just a real short one going over the new updates inside of the project page in version 5.5 of Studio One Professional. I will be covering these much more in depth, especially the automation aspect, because a lot of people just think that automation is for mixing only. It's not, it can be so beneficial for the mastering stage. So stay tuned for that one and for more videos coming real soon. If you do want to know more about digital mastering, please make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tick that bell and select all to receive notifications on all of our videos moving forward. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give it one of those because that will really help the channel moving forward. So all that's left for me to say is I hope you'll keep safe and well. And I'll see you in the next video coming real soon.